and record on this computer. And this is segment number two. Um, where is, there we go. I have to get my, my shit together. <laughs> There we go. No, I want you here. There you go. <clears throat> How to balance fear and the opportunity of growth. Okay, so we're going to get started in three, two, one. Hey, everybody, Gail Craft here, and we're going to stop because my leg is up. <laughs> <laughs> too comfortable right <laughs> all right so here's a blooper that you can use Yolanda <laughs> I'm getting a little bit too comfortable <laughs> let me just close that okay uh sure okay we're ready. And hi, everybody. Gail Craft here. And this is the Empowering Process podcast. This is all about power, purpose, and present. And today with me, we have Devin Pratt from Devin's Holistic Wellness. And we are doing an Ask Me Anything segment. So what this means is I have an Ask Me Anything question from people who are either past clients or other coaches or friends who have sent in this question and Devin is brave enough to go through this with me and so Devin you want to say a little bit about what you do and who you are my name is Devin Pratt as Gail mentioned I am a master certified holistic nutritionist um, working with people on many different levels of nutrition and wellness uh, we work with supplements as well. Uh, we get into cooking and grocery shopping, all the different areas of nutrition that maybe are being left to the side. So we kind of dig into all that, all that good stuff, all the stuff that, you know, happens behind the scenes once you, once you figure out what you're supposed to be eating. Um, we need to know what that looks like on a plate. How do I have to do that? And that's absolutely true. I mean, wait till you wait. If you ever go out to her website, you're just going to like, Devin, I want this recipe, right? How did you do that? But back to the ask me anything. So today, yeah. the question we're going to talk about. So the question was, how do you balance fear and the opportunity of growth? Mm. Fear and the opportunity of growth, which is, that was a good one, um, which is really interesting because you can't grow if you're not a little bit fearful of the next step that you're taking. And, um, and so for me, it's, it's about being comfortable with fear. Mm -hmm. One of the trainings that I do, it's you know, how you know, to live an endlessly delicious life, right? Mm -hmm. It's living an endlessly delicious life, which has about seven or eight practices that I do on a daily basis to embrace to, to really salivate at life to mm -hmm. it's, it's delicious right mm -hmm. and one of the the tricks if you will is to do something outside your comfort zone every day mm -hmm. because this gets you comfortable with being uncomfortable right? right and so um so there so i'm a little agoraphobic for me to go out and um and meet people is frightening mm -hmm for me mm -hmm. and <clears throat> you met me Devin right yeah you would never know it I can get myself out the door mm -hmm. once I do that I'm like okay I'm cool until I get there yeah and then when I get there I have to get the door open mm -hmm. so getting out my door and getting in the next door is frightening is all get out for me and when I first moved to the New Hampshire area, yeah. I scheduled three to five networking opportunities where I had to get out and meet people every single day because I, I knew nobody, right? 
So there would be at the chamber. I went to a whole bunch of different BNI meetings. I went to, you know, women networking events. I, I scheduled the one to ones in between that, um, to the point where, you know, it was insane. But I didn't know anybody. I now have a nice comfort. I'm not doing that now, right? <laughs> <laughs> still holding one to ones. Still going to to yep. online networking events. Yep. Um, so this uh, pandemic thing has been not good for me mm. because it has allowed me to get comfortable being home. Right. Right. And so now I'm, um, I go out on purpose mm -hmm. um, to meet people. Like this week, I've got two schedules where I'm meeting people. We're going to be in our cars in a parking lot. Right. But I have to get out the door yep. into the car. Right. to get to the meeting, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm less uncomfortable than I used to be mm -hmm. with that process. Um, there was a time in my life, so I used to dance mm -hmm. and I went, I went to a dancing event. I got dressed, I got in my car, I got to the event, I got to the door and I literally couldn't open the door mm -hmm. and go in there. I knew everybody, <laughs> right? This was yeah. my community. I could, and I just turned around and went home. Could not go in for some reason that day. Could not fight through. So how does that translate, right? Um, there was something else, obviously must've been something else going on in my life that I was not mm -hmm. equipped to handle getting past that fear. So the first right. thing is, are you equipped, right? Mm -hmm. To get past the fear. Um, so get comfortable, first of all, with being uncomfortable, mm -hmm. right? And then take the steps you need to take just today, just today. I've accomplished some major things in my lifetime, mm -hmm. major things in my lifetime. And, you know, I always start with what do you want it to look like when I'm done, right? What's it supposed to be when I'm done? How do I know I'm done? Right. If I don't know what that is, I, you know, it's like getting in the car and I'm going to go visit Aunt Beth, but I don't know where she lives. Right. <laughs> right. So there's an Aunt Beth out there and I'll go from street to street looking for Aunt Beth. Right. That's right. So you kind of need to know where Aunt Beth lives. Right. You do. It's important. Right. right? So, you know, then you can set your GPS and <laughs> and even on your GPS, it's only going to tell you to take a left at the next turn. Yeah. It's going to say, go straight for 63 miles. Yeah. And then it's going to shut up until take the next exit. Right? right. So if you look at this massive thing that you want in business, if you're an entrepreneur or if you're a career person, it's the same thing. You have a goal. You have achievements. You have things that you want to accomplish in your life, even at a personal level. Right. See what that is. Absolutely see what that is. Feel what it feels like to have succeeded in doing that. Right. And then step back a little bit and figure out what's the one step I can take today that feeds into that. Now, again, back to living an endlessly delicious life. Well, it's actually another training that I put through that I might put a client through too, where you find your word, like my word is delicious. Mm -hmm. Right. I make choices based on if it's a delicious choice or not. Right. Right. If it's not delicious, then it's probably not supporting my goals. Right. Um, I recently purchased a new car versus building a new bathroom. They both were going to serve a very specific need that I had both. But you know what? My dream and my mantra was going to be served by that vehicle. Right. Right. Um, and that's another thing. Many of my clients, especially those who don't have a purpose, part of developing a purpose is we develop their personal mission statement. Right. And I recently shared my personal mission statement with you. Right. Um, if it's not supporting that, so I check, does it give me this? Does it give me this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Then why wouldn't I do it? Of course, I'm going to do it. It really helps with making decisions. So part of managing your fear um, based on the growth that you're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. 
part of that is, first of all, is the step that you're taking bringing you in the direction that you need to go? Mm. And if it's an absolute yes, just take a teeny step, mm -hmm. right? Just a teeny step. Now, when it comes to the cliff, and then I'll ask for your perspective, when it comes to the cliff, I've, I've had many clients that we get to the edge and they've done the work, they've gone this far and we're at the edge and you just need to leap a little bit. Yep. They stop yep. and they go back and they, and they don't leap, right? And what's, what's the most common thing that you hear from people as far as what, what causes them to stop? Um, oh, I got distracted, right? Oh, huh. oh, yeah, I have squirrel syndrome, right? Well, you didn't get distracted on every single step up to here. Right. Right. And so there is an underlying fear that we need to get to. So they're not noticing that that's self-sabotage right. in that moment. It's, right. It has, it has another label. Right. Right. Okay. And, that's, and that's exactly it. It has another label. Um, and I'm the type of person who will take a look and go, that water is so deep, I can't even see the end of it. Mm. Um, I'm just gonna hold my nose and jump in, okay. right? And, and I will hold my nose and jump. And I've had amazing results and amazing failures, <laughs> right? That, that story that I told in a previous segment, all ab about you know having no home, no nothing. Yeah. Because I took that leap and went, yep. oh shit, yep. <laughs> right? Right, but man, the lessons I got from that and the growth I got from that. And that's the other thing, right? And so some of the fear is the fear of success, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and the fear of success comes hidden in a bunch of different ways, right? right. You know, for me, it used to be the fear of losing friends that if I succeed, my family and friends won't understand me and I, I'm going to lose them. Mm -hmm. and, um, and what ended up happening is my friends and family didn't understand me and I lost them, but I got some amazing new friends. Right. And some of my family just call me a witch. <laughs> Right, right. That feels like a bonus to me. Right, right, <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, because of the, you know, to them, it's a miracle. Some of the things that I'm able to accomplish with myself and with my clients. Right. right. You know, how did you know to say that? I, I didn't know. I, yeah. I just felt it was the right thing to do or the right direction right. To, to point them in. Right. So when it comes to um, balancing the fear against the opportunity of growth, what are some of the things that you've seen with your clients or maybe yourself? So I think more often than not with my clients, it's, um, it's a matter of them potentially either being in a situation where they've never felt the way that they would like to feel. So they don't have anything to, um, to Put into their, um, you know, into their minds as far as how it would feel to be at their ideal weight or, you know, at their ideal health or to be able to do the things that they used to be able to do. Those are things that maybe they've never had. And so asking them to put those thoughts into their minds and, and, um, and use that as a reference point or, a, you know, something to aim for, that's a difficult one for people that maybe have never felt that before. Um, right. So then we start to break that out, that down into other, um, in other areas of your life where you have been successful. So if you have not been successful with the goal that you're reaching for, starting to think about the areas of your life where you have been successful. If you're not successful in business, maybe you've been successful in your family. Maybe you've gotten exactly what you set out to have. Um, you know, maybe if it's not health, it has been business. There's always that area in your life where, um, you know, you feel like you excel a little stronger um, than maybe some of the other areas. And so reaching for that feeling of being successful, even if it's not the success that you're actually reaching for specifically with this goal, 
sometimes that helps people break it down. Um, I think that for some people, um, they don't know, you know, and a lot of people, we touched on it with yours, they don't know that it's self-sabotage. And so feeling like, well, I don't understand why it never works out for me. I don't understand why I get so close to my goals and then I just don't, I don't achieve them. It's because we don't feel like we deserve it. You know, it's always, always, always the cause. And so anytime that I'm reaching for a goal and I'm unable to achieve it, I have to take a look at, do I think I'm capable of achieving this? Do I think I'm, you know, do I think I deserve this? Um, right. Are you good enough? Are you smart enough? Are you strong yeah. enough? Yeah. All of those things, all of those enoughs. Um, and so being able to look at that, you know, subjectively, and I find that process to be easier when I'm um, having those conversations by myself, but sometimes we need a little help, you know, unpacking that. And so being able to have someone kind of walk you through that, someone that you trust, you know, someone that you know can, again, we, we tapped into this discussion um, in a previous segment about uh, people calling you out, you know, having people in your life that you trust, that you can have call you out in ways that will improve your life. If you're going to be in a place where you self-sabotage, then having people in your life around you who are going to say, no, that's, I'm not going to let that happen. You know, you're better than this. You got to, you got to fight harder. You have to, we have to figure out what's going on here and we have to get you, you know, into a better space. Whether we're hiring that person to help us do that, or whether we're lucky enough to have those kind of healthy people in our lives, um, you know, it's, that's an individual thing, but I think that regardless of what we have to do to, to get those people in our lives, if we don't already have them, we need to get them because that's, uh, that's the kind of support system that it really requires, I think, to, to have that kind of fear and to move forward anyway. I think sometimes we need to, um, you know, call in the, call in the calorie, help us Ooh, out. It's never a lonely, we are not an isolating, creature mm. right we are a uh, tribal mm. creature right mm -hmm. we lived in clans we right. started off in clans right and um at any i read a book one time and, and it said at any given point in time you can look at somebody's phone book or contacts mm. and find 50 to 75 people who they they consider pretty close mm. that's their clan and that, that group may change, mm. but that's their clan. 50 to 70? Yep. Wow. Yep. Um, now, there's a difference in how close, mm. right? Because right? if you think of, of a tribe, you know, you're not going to be, you know, you may be not all that close to the medicine man, but you really do know, <laughs> right? <laughs> you're really, really friendly with, the, you know, the whoever takes care of the kids, right? Whatever right. You call them, right? Um, maybe you're the person who works in the gardening while the, the guys are out hunt, you know, hunting, killing, mm. right? Doing their thing. So um, there's a difference in closeness, but still that those are the people that you would contact mm -hmm. and connect with. If you had a big party, they would be there, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I thought that was interesting. That was something that I, I kind of played off of a little bit in my mind. Um, but it really does require that you understand you don't do it alone. Mm. You know, that was one of my struggles when I started in business, right? Um, as a career person, I didn't realize I was not alone. I mean, I had my staff, mm -hmm. right? And so they did the work. My job was the facilitator. I made it possible for them to do the work, right? I mean, you know, the tools or I was the buffer. So, you know, no one went near them while they did their work, um, but that was my job. And so it didn't really dawn on me that I wasn't working alone because my boss's job was obviously to give me the tools and you know, right. the same thing. Um, when I became an entrepreneur, I had no clue what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And the first business I was in was with someone, right? 
who had been an entrepreneur. And I thought, okay, so I will learn from her. Mm -hmm. And, and I was not learning from her mm -hmm. um, at all. And so I ended up going into business on my own mm -hmm. and I joined groups. I joined um, a co-working place in San Diego that was all about supporting women entrepreneurs, right? And, you know, and showing them the tools and techniques needed to succeed and how to, you know, communicate what one-to-ones were. You know, I joined a BNI group and you know, all of those things in order to learn. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, because I went into coaching, um, I already had a network of people in the dance community who were looking for coaches. Right. And so I did not have a hard time finding clients at first. Right. So I was able to build those skills. Right. Organically, even though I was out learning those skills, um, it wasn't, oh, my God, when am I going to get the next client? I right. had the clients. Right. I, I wasn't in a panic state. Mm -hmm. um, and, and wasn't trying to figure out how to make those connections. So, mm -hmm. um, but I was always striving for more. And that's, a, you know, another thing for, you know, dealing with this fear of growth is um, you've got to feel, it's got to take your breath away. Mm. It's got to be a roller coaster ride, right? Because that's what, that's what it is. Right. And, and if you enjoy it, I don't enjoy roller coaster rides, but I love the bumper cards. So, you know, my, mine is in the bumper cards, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to bang and I'm going to smash, but I'm going to go after the next one. I'm going to go after yeah. the next one. Right. That's what it feels like. So you think any challenge? No, we're should talking feel, about should feel like that. Any um, growth? Yes. Okay. <laughs> You're not growing if you're not challenging yourself. And if you're challenging yourself, there should be a little bit of fear there. Not enough to hold you back. Right, right. Right, a little bit of trepidation. And yes, my leg is up again, and that's too bad. <laughs> right, because I'm very, okay. very, right, I'm very, very comfortable talking with Devin, right? So, um, yeah, because you're not stretching yourself. But thinking about some of the challenges, some of the growth, um, and, you know, obviously this is specifically pertaining to business and business growth, but I do definitely think there's a lot of areas of personal growth as well, where some of those changes that we have to make, I'm not ever going to feel like that's a roller coaster. I'm not ever going to feel like that. <laughs> you know, there's, there's just specific things that we have to work on in ourselves that maybe aren't as they're not as delicious. They're not delicious. <laughs> oh, but not the, as result, delicious. the result is delicious, though. The result is delicious. Right. Yes. Right. And being able to kind of focus on the end result is right. Uh, is a thing. Right. I'm a huge. You're. This is how you and I. This is how you and I um, complement each other. You're a goal oriented person. You're very um, very capable of thinking about the end result having a very, very specific thing in mind that you would like to accomplish and then getting yourself there. That's your superpower. You're great at that. Um, I struggle a little bit with that end goal, having, um, you know, a tangible outline. Um, I'm more of a, I don't know what that's going to look like. Let's just start and see how it goes. <laughs> Because right, I'm about right. the journey. I'm about the journey. I love right. that part of it. I love the, um, I love the click, click, click of the right. roller coaster. Right. Um, I have no idea what it's going to look like when we start, you know, going down on the other side of that. Um, but you know, you know you're going to have the click, click, click again. But yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the, that's the, that's the delicious part for me. Yeah. Um, so what do you suggest for people that um, maybe think a little bit more like me who aren't um, aren't as, um, we're just not as great at the whole, you know, having that end goal, have all of its definition and lines and, and numbers. And that's having a mission statement because the mission statement is a way of being it's yeah. et eternal. It doesn't have an end. My mission statement doesn't really have an end. Okay. Right. Um, it has a, a it, it's about how I show up, how right. I want to show up every day mm -hmm. and why I want to show up like this every day. Right. Right. Um, and so, yeah, so my end result is your growth. Yeah. 
right? That's, that's why I show up every day. Yeah. And um, I'm not responsible for your growth, right? But I will show up for your growth, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, if you call upon me, I'll be there. And if um, if we're done, then okay, call me when you're ready. <laughs> yeah. More, yeah, right, right. Um, so the mission statement, and so you're, um, you enjoy the. I love the journey too. You enjoy the journey, and your focus is on the journey, but that's not true. Your focus is on that client and where they're going to be when you're done with them. Well, and like I said, in in the personal sense, it's a completely different conversation. Right. But in a business sense, of course, everything yeah. that I do is is pertaining to, um, you know, who I want to be for them and who I can, um, you know, the goals that I can help clients achieve for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as them, like say, you know, clients that that you have that have that um, that struggle as well about having that ability to just write out their, you know, their mission. Oh, they hate me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, you, do you think a lot of people struggle with that? Um, they they absolutely do. Um, but what I do, I have exercises that we go through. So now mm -hmm. I'll talk. I'll talk about my last client, and I don't know what exercise I'm going to pull out for you because I don't know what you need until we meet. Right. Right. Um, and, you know, I have a couple at first so that we can find what your dharma is. What's your, what's your God-given gift? What is that? And what's your purpose here on okay. this earth, right? Whether you agree or not, that's what it mm. is. And that's what we're going to work work towards. And he disagreed. It's like, his came out of communication. I hate writing. Are you kidding me? Right? We dug into that and he doesn't hate writing. He's an amazing writer. He's an amazing storyteller, mm. right? But he's a little embarrassed because he's dyslectic. So, so am I. Right. That's where the yeah. that's where the frustration comes. And so he, sure. he he didn't hate writing. He hated the process. What that meant. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and guess what? He's now writing a book. Yeah. Um, during that process, there is another group of questions that I sent to him. And, you know, in and of themselves, each question, you know, is is digging deep. Right. Mm. And when we were done. We went through the questions and every once in a while I would highlight one. Mm -hmm. And um, and as I was going, I go, oh, you must have hated me this week. He goes, oh yeah, I was cursing you. I'm like, you, you did a good job though, right? When we were done, I took those sentences out mm -hmm. and I said, here's your personal mission statement. And he read it, he goes, oh my God. I said, no, you need to clean it up. Right. Right. Um, and he now reads that to himself every day. And the next thing he does an hour later is reads off a list of how that he created, right? Yeah. Um, so how, you know, so what was the point of all this? <laughs> <laughs> I digress. I it's digress. very easy to get kind of on a, yes, yes. On and, a so, path. and so, and so, yes. Yeah, so for him, right. He came because he could no longer bear the pain of not challenging himself to grow mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. those are my clients i can no longer bear the pain of being invisible mm. right he was successful he's got plenty of money good job nice family blah 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 and never ever had a dream mm. and um now he has a dream he has a goal he has a purpose he's yeah. got juices running in his body that has never run in his body before it's beautiful don't you think it almost doesn't matter what the goal is it doesn't it's it doesn't the act it's the act of improvement of self-improvement um that i think really yep. taps into the parts of you that are very human um and they're about the most you know delicious parts of being human right, right? it's um i think uh one of the things that really has helped me recently, um, you know, on a personal level, but also um, in business, the cure for anxiety, or in this conversation, fear, is action. Right. So thinking about anytime something makes me nervous or, you know, causes fear, take a step. 
And it doesn't have to even be a step in the right direction. Nope. 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 Because momentum is momentum. Right. Movement is movement. And so if you think about, you know, and in my case, it's a very um, applicable, you know, example. If you think about a person that's sitting on the couch, no movement there, the likelihood of movement there is less likely than a person who's standing and maybe rocking back and forth, Mm -hmm. right? The likelihood that that person that's already standing and rocking back and forth, the likelihood that they're going to stay, take a step is much higher than a person who's laying down on the couch. Right. Um, Right. And like I said, that's just an example, but obviously it pertains specifically to health. Um, But I think that regardless of the direction, regardless of the, the topic, if you're scared, take a step, take a step. Yep. Yeah. I mean, at some point you do have to take a leap of faith. There's going to be the, the gap between this step and the next yep. will be big, but yep. you will have practiced facing fear every day. Right. 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 Little teeny steps. And that's what happens with coaching. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Is to, is to step back and let's just do this. You know, I'll work with clients. I'll go, well, this week, the only homework I want you to do and I always say the only homework I want you to do, even if it's a lot, right. <laughs> is, is this, right? Do you think you can do that? Will you be able mm-hmm. to fit that in? Awesome. If you can't, then I'm going to take something off, right? I want to mm-hmm. be sure that you accomplish, because then our sessions are about success. Right. And that's another way to deal with the fear of growth mm-hmm. and whether it's personal growth or business growth right if you focus on your success we have way more successes than failures and our mm-hmm. society has taught us to focus on the bad and not on the good yeah yep. oh you got four a's and one d why did you get a d wait a minute yep <laughs> wait a minute yeah i got four a's right maybe that's right. not my strength right right so you're absolutely right it's yeah it's- it's um, one of the things I think as a coach that if you're not doing, you're really, in my, in my humble opinion, um, I think that we're doing a disservice if we're not setting our clients up for success. You, um, you're creating a belief system in that person and by them, you know, achieving small goals and, and you know, to use your example of taking that next step, um, if they have a history of you know being successful in those steps, then they're going to assume that they can be successful, you know, in their goals. Right. Uh, and that's right. obviously on a personal level and you know on a business level. I think that just it it travels into all areas of life. Absolutely, success breeds success. And and right. what happens when we allow ourselves, we give ourselves permission to, to focus on successes, mm-hmm. that when we have those moments of failure, we can dust ourselves up, right? Right. Yeah. And take the next step towards success. Right. We can look at it for what it is and not look at it as, well, I can't do that anyway. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, I do lots of things that are not my strengths. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean I can't do it. I don't do it as well as the next person, Yeah. right? But the things that are my strength, the next person doesn't come anywhere near what I can do, Mm -hmm. right? And so I may do something that I struggle with, but I focus on what I'm great at, right? Right. Um, Anything else that you can think of? I mean, this is a subject we could go on forever and we don't have that much time. No, I think that, I think we've tapped into all the main points that... I think our, um, uh, no, I think we're good. Okay, so um, Devin from Devin's Holistic Wellness, thank you for spending your time with me today. Share with us how people can get in touch with you if they want more information about the wonderful things that you do with food and mindset. So the website is www.dhwellness.com. And I do have Devin's Wholesome, uh, excuse me, Devin's Holistic Wellness uh, Facebook page as well. Um, All the free tips and tricks and recipes and all that good stuff. Um, And the telephone number is 603-998-9951.
Fantastic. Thank you so much, Devin, for your time. I am definitely going to go and take a look at some more of your recipes. I love them all. <laughs> and again, this is Gail Craft from the Empowering Process podcast. If you really like this, please do give me a thumbs up, share it with someone who you think might get something, leave a comment. And if something came up for you, definitely leave a comment or send me a PM, let me know. And that will be one of our other Ask Me Anything segments. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. Done. That was a good one. <laughs>